Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, a landlocked gem full of spectacular wildlife and wilderness. But even in paradise, there are perils among the chimpanzees who will care for a little orphan. And can a lioness wounded by a poacher's snare survive to care for her cubs? Some animals here face challenges that require human help, like these rare giraffes who need a new home. We have uh, two male giraffes and uh, four females. Together, they're on the road to success in wild Uganda. towering mountains, volcanic craters, and colossal Lake Victoria, the source of the Nile River. From space, it's easy to locate Uganda. In East Africa, it lies between Lake Victoria in the southeast and the mountains of the Rift Valley in the west. Uganda boasts a natural treasure trove of national parks. Its most famous is Bwindi Impenetrable Forest in the southwestern part of the country. Bwindi used to be a forest reserve where people could go in and cut timber, but it became a national park in 1992 to protect the gorillas and the other wildlife in the park, which includes elephants, chimpanzees, and other species. Conservationist Gladys Kalima Zikosoka is leading the effort to save Uganda's critically endangered mountain gorillas in parks like Bowindi. This park is small, just over 310 square kilometers, yet it has some impressive inhabitants. Like this adult male mountain gorilla named Mukiza. Wind Impenetrable National Park is home to just under half of the world's endangered mountain gorillas, a minimum of 459 gorillas, and we're really pleased that the numbers are continuing to grow. Mukiza is the head of a group of 10 gorillas, six adult females, one sub-adult male, two young females, and two babies. Tweaky gave birth two months ago. The group's attention is focused on her new baby, Ni Kubara. Mountain gorillas are so similar to us. We share over 98% genetic material. And clearly, a mother's love for her baby is part of our joint inheritance. Ni Kubara will depend on her mother until she's six years old. Tweaky and her baby are members of the Kia Gorillo group. Scientists know their history well. They've studied them for over 20 years. This fairy tale valley is such a popular gorilla eatery that it's attracted another group, the Bidakura. led by a huge silverback called Magisha. Silverbacks can eat more than 30 kilos of vegetation a day. 
Even the smaller females eat more than 18 kilos. The group spends up to six hours a day just chowing down. Life is peaceful and conflicts with neighboring guerrilla groups are rare, even though their home ranges may overlap. Magisha is a gentle giant and often spends hours playing with the youngsters in his group. Researchers believe Magisha is 18 years old, a mature adult. The baby gorillas are very curious, just like human babies. And when they are born in a group, they tend to be very close-knit. They tend to groom each other a lot. And the babies of the different females play together, and they learn a lot from each other. Gorillas can spend half the day relaxing once they get over their youthful curiosity. Gorillas are very sociable animals. They live in a harem with a father and many females and many babies. And the mothers are very good mothers. There are 13 gorillas in the Bidakuru group. This young male is known as Naguru. He's two years old. Rukumu is the group elder. He's likely in his early 30s and was presumably once the dominant silverback. These days, he lives peacefully on the periphery of the group, enjoying a guerrilla version of retirement. Like a tolerant grandpa, he lets a young female climb aboard and gives her a gentle lesson in chess beating. She learns quickly, even though chest beating is normally a male behavior. As in a human family, gorillas of all ages interact, cuddle, and play. Mountain gorillas have an enviable lifestyle. Long naps followed by big feasts, followed by long naps. It's pretty much what all gorillas do. But when it comes to food, gorilla groups have different styles. Bawindi gorillas prefer a rooftop restaurant, climbing trees in search of a bite to eat. The gorillas mainly like to eat leaves, shoots, and stems. But because Bwindi Penetropa National Park has very many tall trees, they also eat quite a lot of fruit. The entire group may scramble up as high as 30 meters to feast on ripe fruit in the treetops. Although the young gorillas are fairly clumsy, they still climb the tall trees and eat fruit right off the branches. It's risky business for babies still honing their climbing skills. And adults whose 160 kilograms test the smaller branches. But the payoff is worth it. The fruit is much more nutritious than the usual diet of leaves. Gorillas here once faced far greater dangers than hazardous climbs. In the 1980s, poaching almost led to the extinction of these primates. They survived thanks to sanctuaries like Buindi. Uganda's natural riches stretch from the mountain forests down to the shores of Africa's largest lake, Lake Victoria. 
Tanzania and Kenya share this water source. But almost half lies in Uganda. The White Nile springs to life from the northwest end of the lake as a wild, tumultuous stream. Despite the construction of power stations and dams, the river remains a true force of nature. The Nile flows over plains and down rapids until it thunders over the edge of Murchison Falls. In fact, there are two waterfalls here, Uhuru and Murchison. Murchison Falls National Park is Uganda's largest conservation area. It's home to an endangered subspecies of giraffe called the Rothschild's giraffe. In Uganda, we have over 1,200 giraffes. And actually, the last stronghold of the Rothschild giraffe is Murchison Falls National Park, which is amazing. They can grow more than five and a half meters in height, making them some of the world's tallest. Their coloring is unique, too, with dark brown and orange patches on their bodies, while their lower legs have no markings at all. These gentle giants face threats from illegal hunting, human population growth, and oil and gas exploration. But conservationists have come up with a way to whisk them out of danger. Since the human activities are mainly on the north side of the Nile, Operation Twiga, Swahili for giraffe, has been translocating them to the safer south side. But that is no easy feat. Remove, remove, remove. In Uganda's magnificent Murchison Falls National Park, wildlife experts are holding their breaths as they prepare to translocate six giraffes. For now, the animals are in a boma, or corral, waiting to be loaded onto a truck. This one sports a GPS headset to track her movements after release, so park rangers can be sure she's safe. Loading them onto the truck is tricky business. There's a little jockeying for position, but they gradually all settle in. A ranger secures the tailgate under the watchful eyes of a giraffe who's become everyone's favorite for his easygoing personality. His fans include two giraffe experts from Michigan State University who are helping with the operation. So he's the one facing the other side, that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's the, he's the, yes. The shortest guy. He's the one nicknamed uh, Melman because he looks like the giraffe in uh, Penguins from Madagascar. Melman, another man and four females set out in a truck stocked with acacia branches for snacking on the go. Trucking giraffes is not without its perils. If one should fall and get trampled, it could meet a tragic end, but it's still the best way for them to travel. You can't travel with giraffes when they're lying flat. They can't spend a lot of time lying down because of the pressure in their body and the long neck. They're very, very fragile. It'll be a bumpy 17-hour journey to their new home. This is very exciting. The loading went well, and all the giraffes are now in the carts. Everything went smoothly. Once you get the giraffe in a truck, and they're with their fellow giraffe, they relax and they settle down. The giraffes head to their new stomping grounds across the Nile River. Once they arrive, they'll get a glimpse of some of their new neighbors. Several thousand hippos live in the park, 
They can weigh almost three metric tons, and they aggressively defend their young against any potential threat. In the middle of the last century, there were millions of hippos in Africa. Now, under increasing threat, Murchison Falls National Park is a vitally important sanctuary. Here, hippo numbers are gradually increasing. At midday, thirsty elephants arrive on the banks of the Nile. The hippos obviously don't appreciate the other pachyderms pushing in and look for a quieter spot. To the south, but also along Uganda's western border, is Queen Elizabeth National Park. It's one of Africa's oldest nature reserves and the most popular park in Uganda for both tourists and wildlife. It has the greatest diversity in any of Uganda's parks. This park features a rich mix of lakes, rivers, forests, and plains. The Ishasha River forms the border with the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So you could say these hippos are the border guards. Bull elephants sometimes gather in the forests and savanna alongside the Ishasha. Some may be 40 or even 50 years old, a good sign for the health of the park's herds. Elephant bulls were once thought to be solitary, but scientists now believe they sometimes band together. And in these bachelor herds, the old boys spend their time shooting the bull about the locals. The equator is just a few kilometers away, and frequent tropical rains keep the landscape a lush green, providing excellent grazing for thousands of animals. The grasslands of this park are home to huge herds of buffalo. The intense midday heat drives them to water holes. The buffalo are only outnumbered by Uganda cob. Females and their young roam the plains together in large groups. Males tend to lead solitary lives, but not during mating season. Each buck defends a small patch of grass in order to impress and hopefully attract females. They strut their stuff with fancy footwork. The occasional mock fight adds to the spectacle. There are tens of thousands of Uganda cob in the park. Right now, it's full of baby animals making their first unsteady steps. Young and naive, they're likely victims of armies of relentless hunters, especially when evening falls and spotted hyenas hunt. Tonight, they've made a kill. In the half-light, the hyenas devour their meal. Hyenas crunch and eat even the bones of their prey. Antelope watch, but keep their distance from the hyenas. This buck provides a hearty dinner. For now, his sacrifice will keep his herd mate safe. 
but they watch warily as the hyena is joined by white-backed vultures. <laughs> the vultures keep well away from the hyena's powerful jaws. He tries to hide the body in the bushes. The vultures just wait. They know the hyena will eventually give up. Like hyenas, lions hunt at night after spending the day resting and sleeping. This tired lion has chosen a candelabra tree for an afternoon nap. The lions of Uganda are among the few lions in the world who spend much of their lives in trees. And scientists don't know why. Is it simply a behavior that's been passed down for generations? Does this lioness just feel safe on her high perch? Or do the tree-climbing lions enjoy a better view of their prey? The antelope are nervous. They must know they're being watched. But this older lioness, named Brenda by park rangers, has herself almost fallen prey to the deadliest predator of all. It would seem lions would be the apex predators in Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda. But it's the wire snares of illegal human hunters that are the cruelest killers. Rangers collect thousands each year, but they can't keep up with a practice rampant in parks across Africa. Lioness Brenda was caught in a snare around her neck when rangers spotted her just in time and freed her. She still bears the scar, but she escaped with her life. Every day, rangers find animals caught in these snares. To free them, they have to immobilize them so the animals don't panic. The snares are designed to tighten as an animal struggles to escape. A very few get help in time, like this lucky young antelope. A win-win for her and the rangers. <laughs> 